Happy Friday, everybody. I'm thankful you've been with us this week and today for our uh, Bible devotions and our Bible reading plan. We are in chapter five of Mark's gospel. So uh, go ahead and be opening your Bible there if you haven't already and get in your journal so you can take some notes. Just want to encourage you uh, to be in worship this Sunday um, here at First Baptist. We'll have our own campus service as we do every every Sunday, our traditional service at nine o'clock and and then our contemporary service at 10.30 with Leanna Crawford leading worship this week. And I'm, I'm going to be preaching a sermon from Mark's gospel this week. We've wrapped up Genesis. So this Sunday I'll be preaching from Mark and invite you to join us. And also, if you haven't uh, put on your calendar yet and plan to be here for March 28, our, our Parenting Matters weekend, you, you really want to be here for that. It's going to be a great, great day. All right, Mark chapter 5. Um there's there's an unusual story um, in this chapter, and the question that I kept asking as I read it was this: Why did Jesus allow the demons to enter those two thousand pigs, and then the demons cause those two thousand pigs to run off a cliff and drown in the sea? Why? Uh, you remember uh, <clears throat> the the first half of this chapter is about Jesus going to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And there's a man who met him when he got out of the boats. And in chapter 5, verse 2, let's just read two or three verses together, starting at verse 2. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. So a man filled with a demon who lived in the graveyard. And he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. So the demon gave him, you know, extraordinary strength, physical strength. Verse 5, constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and, and gashing himself with stones. So he was hurting himself physically. He was mentally deranged, if you will. And uh, <clears throat> Jesus and this man have a conversation, and the demons, plural, inside, speak to Jesus and identify themselves as legion, for they are many. So here's a man who's possessed not by one demon, but by many, many demons. How many? We don't know. Uh, the fact that they entered 2,000 pigs, because remember, Jesus cast them out, and uh, 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 they asked, don't send us to the abyss. Let us, let us enter that herd of swine, and he agreed, and they entered those pigs, and it tells us there were 2,000 pigs that ran, that ran off the cliffs. Maybe there were 2,000 demons in this, in this man, you know, just a horrible, horrible situation. But, but these pigs run off the cliff into the Sea of Galilee, and they die. They, they drown. And uh, the man then, in verse, uh, verse 15, is sitting there in his right mind. So they, the demon possession you know, hurt him physically, but also hurt him mentally. And people coming to check out what was going on saw that he was in his right mind, that he was mentally straight. He was clean. He was okay. He was good. Um, and it just blew them away. But again, why did he let the demons run into the pigs? Because, you know, those pigs belong to somebody. Uh, somebody lost some, uh, some money, if you will, because those pigs all drowned. Why did he let that happen? <clears throat> well, the truth is, I don't know. But let me make two suggestions as to possible reasons, okay? One, maybe Jesus was trying to dramatize in a very dramatic way, very physical way for everybody around there just how, uh, how evil and how dangerous demons and Satan really are. Okay, if demons would do that to pigs, imagine what they do to people. That's why this man, you know, had mental problems and he hurt himself physically and and was not in relationships with others. And maybe Jesus was just in a dramatic fashion making the point that Satan always wants to ruin people's lives, that that demons always want to destroy people, even kill people. Um, so why would you ever play around with anything Satan's trying to do in your life? Why would, why would you ever play around with the ways of the world and the ways of Satan? Because the ways of the world are the ways of Satan. So why would you ever play around with that? Because it's always about destroying you, never blessing you. Maybe that's one of the things that Jesus was trying to teach people in this very dramatic way. Here's a second suggestion. I don't know that if this is what Jesus was really 
trying to do, but it's interesting. Maybe Jesus was trying to dramatize for everybody that people matter more than animals. Uh-oh, I'm going to get in trouble, aren't I? Because in today's culture, you can't say anything like that. And yet, in the Bible, only human beings are created in the image of God. Now, I'm not saying we are to be mean to animals. We are to needlessly harm animals. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that when people put animals on the same level as human beings, uh, they're making a mistake because God created man in his image, not our pets and not animals. They're precious. They're valuable. They are to be loved and treated well. But humans are to be treated better. Um, I know that's contrary to the way a lot of people in our culture want to think. And because of that, while we're sometimes elevating the life of animals in our culture, we devalue the life of human beings. We don't value people enough. Um, we see that in the whole abortion debate. We see that in, all, you know, in racism. We see that in a lot of ways, that we don't value human beings enough. God created people in his image. Why did Jesus let the demons go into the pigs and the pigs then drown? I don't know. But it does remind us of, of, of two things that are true in Scripture and in life. One is that Satan and his demons only want to hurt you, never help you, and that people matter more. Whether or not that's what Jesus intended here, I don't know. But it's true nonetheless. The Bible teaches it. And so remember that. Um, Satan and this world are always out in the end, in the long run, to ruin your life, never bless your life. And people, people, people always matter more. Hey, God bless you. See you Sunday in worship and then next week as we continue these daily devotions.